Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at this power station from Vatomen. It is the Flash Speed 1500. Uh, I love this box. This box is pretty awesome because it gives you all the information right up front. It gives us the fact that it is a 1548 watt hour unit and it can power 1500 watts. And then on the side here, it has all the product highlights. It says that it supports 1500 watts of AC charging by a 110 outlet with recharging speeds up to full in one hour. Supports 400 watts max solar charging and 200 watts max DC charging. Built-in lithium iron phosphate batteries. It does say that it has V Beyond technology, allows flash speed 1500 to run resistive loads over 1500 watts, but no more than 3000 watts, such as lights, space heaters, toasters, ovens, and coffee makers. It does say that it has a UPS function uh, that will switch over in less than 20 milliseconds. It says it has three AC outlets, that are rated for 110 volts at 1500 watts, but can peak at 3000 watts, which are all pure sine wave. It does have two power delivery ports that run at 100 watts for your high speed devices. It also has three regulated DC ports to power such things as car refrigerators, uh, portable vacuum cleaners, and also like tire inflators. And this unit does also include a built-in 12 watt LED light. And it has uh, five lighting mode settings, which is weak, medium, strong, strobe, and SOS. So just by looking at the box, I'm pretty impressed. But let's go ahead and open it up and actually see what we got. All right, when you first open the box, you do get your user manual and some pretty slick looking stickers. This white box that looks like it has the AC plug. A DC uh, cigarette lighter port to, uh, looks like a 5521 barrel plug. And a, uh, a USB-C to USB-C cord and a USB-C to a USB-A cord. So they give you plenty of cords. All right, and then the unit itself. All right, and here's what the unit looks like up close. What you can see is all of your inputs covered by this little flap. And this is your 1500 watt AC input. You also have the DC input that is uh, 200 watts max. And then you have an Anderson connector that is for your solar input and it is 400 watts max. And with these DC inputs, it does say that the, uh, the barrel plug input can handle between 12 and 20 volts. And the Anderson connector can handle between 30 and 60 volts. All right, when it comes to the outputs, we have our two USB-Cs, which are both rated at 100 watts. We have our DC barrel plugs and cigarette lighter adapter. They are all rated for 12 volts at 10 amps. And then our USB A's, these three at the top are rated for 12 watts of output and the quick charge at the bottom is rated for 18 watts of output. On the AC side, we have our three AC receptacles and they are rated for 1500 watts of output with a max of 3000 watts. Now, the way that it does that is it lowers the voltage by increasing the amperage. You also have two plugs over here. One says jumper cable and it shows a car, but nowhere in the manual does it even reference this whatsoever. And there are no cables that come with this unit that plug into here. This one, on the other hand, is a plug in for an extra battery. You can actually double the capacity of this unit by purchasing an extra battery and plugging, plugging it in right here. So that can give you actually over 3000 watt hours. All right, this side of the unit does have a, uh, a fan port. The back of the unit does have the light and all the information about the portable power station itself. 
This side does have the other side of the fan ports so the air can go through the unit. And on the top, there is this nice opening area where you can, you can house all of your cabling right here. Okay, this unit does say that it can charge at 1500 watts. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and see what it does right from opening the box. All right, it shows capacities at 82% and it shows 920, 1270, 1550, 1596. Yeah, so it is charging at 1584 watts right now. That is impressive. All right, well, I just charged this thing all the way up to 100%, and I was kind of surprised that it got all the way to 99%, and it was still pushing over 1500 watts into this unit. And then at the very end, it started to taper down for only about less than a minute, and then it reached its 100% capacity. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a DC capacity test and an AC capacity test to see what the efficiency rates are for this unit. Okay, well the DC capacity test is done for the Vitomin and we have a total of 1292.99 watt hours, which equated to 104.93 amp hours. Now, if you divide that by the 1548 that it says its complete capacity is, you do get an 83.5% efficiency rate on the DC side. So let's go ahead and check the AC side and see what it is. All right, the AC capacity test is done for the Vitoman Flash Speed 1500. Let's find out the results. And the results are 1,169 watt hours. If you divide that by 1,548 possible watt hours, you get a 75.5 efficiency rate on the AC side. Okay, now we're gonna do a little bit of AC testing on the Vitoman 1500 watt inverter. Uh, what I have is my uh, new wave induction cooktop, which can go up to 1300 watts. And then I have a 200 watt heater and a 500 watt heater. What I wanna see is, first of all, can it power this on max and my 200 watt heater that will give me right around 1500 watts. Can it do that consistently for just a few minutes? And then I'm gonna turn on the 500 watt heater to kind of see what happens with the voltage as it's going over that 1500 watts. And what it'll do is I'll, I think it'll try to lower the voltage. And when it does that, my induction cooktop might start freaking out because it's sensitive. So let's just get this started and see what happens. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just power on my new wave at 600 watts. And the output voltage is right around 112 volts. And it shows by the kilowatt meter that we are pulling 613 watts. And the watts on the display do show 626 watts. So let's go ahead and bump this up to 900. All right, the fans on the Vitoman just turned on. Uh, it shows that we're right around 920 watts. Uh, the voltmeter on the kilowatt side, it still shows 112 volts coming out of the AC, which is good. And the wattage it shows is actually 883 watts. So let's go ahead and kick this all the way up. All right, the Vitoma is now showing a wattage output of 1250 to 1260 watts. The watts on the kilowatts show 1208. The voltage is still 111.5 coming out of the AC, which is pretty good. So let's go ahead and turn on the 200 watt heater and see what happens. I just turned on our timer. It's showing 111.6 volts coming out of this receptacle and 112.6 coming out of this receptacle. And the unit shows 1549 watts coming out of the unit. This actually shows 1218 and this shows 195. So that's a little around, that's, that's right around 1400 watts. All right, well, it's been like uh, almost a minute and a half. We've been running this 1500 watts. The Vitoman isn't having an issue with it at all. But let's see what happens when we turn on this 500 watt heater. 500 watt heater's on. The Vitoman is still, the display on the Vitoman is showing 
1980 watts and it's still running. It's showing 195 watts from here. It's showing 1165 from here. And this one doesn't have anything, but I'm guessing it's a 500 watt heater. So it's probably pulling, you know, 470 to 480 watts from there. All right, actually the voltage just stepped down. It stepped down to 95.8 volts from this receptacle running my, uh, my new wave. And it's running 96 volts running this 200 watt heater. But it's still running everything just fine. So that voltage, even though it's low, is still powering these devices, which I'm actually surprised about. I thought my new wave would start freaking out. All right, it's been over three minutes, almost three and a half minutes. I'm feeling the fan on the side of the Vatoman and the air is a little warm, but nothing to be concerned about whatsoever. And the display still shows that we're powering 1700 watts. You know, I must say, I'm pretty impressed with the kind of power you can pull from these AC receptacles. I mean, I'm powering well over the 1500 that it, that it says. And uh, the step down of voltage was clean enough where it didn't mess up any of my, any of my devices. All right, now I'm testing the USB ports on this Vitomin. And I have it on just one of the 5 volt 2.4 amp plugs. And it does show that it is powering up to 15 watts. What I'm doing is I'm charging this other power station. And now if I move it down to the quick charge port, it goes from 15 watts. It went all the way up to 25 watts, but it has actually lowered back down to 18 watts of power coming out of the quick charge. And let's try the output of the USB-C. And now with the cable that came with the Vitomin, the USB-C, the USB-C, it looks like it's only able to power uh, uh, right around 60 watts. So that's probably the limitation of this cable. Let me find another cable to see if we can get a higher wattage. All right, and with this much stronger cable that can handle 100 watts quite easily, uh, I am pulling 94 watts from the Vitomin. The cabling that came with it will only really give you 60 watts of output. Uh, but don't think it's the problem with the unit. It's the problem with the cabling. All right, the next thing I'm going to try is this DC vacuum. Now, this thing can easily pull 10 amps at 12 volts. So we're going to make sure that uh, this DC port right here can power it. And you can see that it can power this vacuum just fine. Okay, well this Vitomin is happily charging up at over 1600 watts and it is powering this laptop which is powered by about 40 watts. And so what would happen if the power went out? So let's go ahead and test that now. Nothing. Absolutely nothing will happen with the AC side if the power to the Vitomin suddenly is disrupted. And just to show you that this laptop will shut off in case of a power outage, if I pull the plug, instantly turns off. Okay, so if you're looking for a mid-size power station, something that can handle 1500 watts of AC with no problem, and something that has plenty of USB ports, you know, 12 volt ports, and can charge up at 1600 watts, which that means that this thing can charge up in under two hours, no problem. That, this right here is probably the fastest charging mid-level device I have uh, reviewed thus far. Also, it does come with the option of buying a second battery pack. Instead of having over 1,500 watt hours of capacity, you could get almost 3,100 watt hours of capacity for one device. A couple of things that this device is missing though is the option of having a uh, wireless charger on top and it does not have an app that you can use to control the device. So if those are things that you really need, uh, unfortunately, you probably want to look at something else. But if you're looking at capacity, speed of charging, and just the ability to power 1500 watt devices from the AC side with no problem, uh, you might want to look at this Vitomin Flash Speed 1500. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the Vitomin Flash Speed 1500, please leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this in my description in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.